<clears throat> hey, what's going on, everybody? Hello. 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 How are you? <laughs> Good. Yeah. We're, you're very yellow today. I wish I would have known. I'm very white very and yellow. red today. It's kind of tan, but the green's making it look yellow. Like I what is? Are you in the green room again? Well, I can like adjust it. It's my like Jungle Cruise. I need a hat. Like my ears don't match. But it's yeah. My Jungle I, Cruise skipper dress. <laughs> my TikToky ring light thing just turned off. I had it all oh, set no. up nice. Yeah. Now you're in oh, the dark. I think it's. I think, it's, I, think I need to charge it. I put the green room back on. It's a like, little too green. <laughs> yeah, it's better. <clears throat> All right, hey, we're we know what we're doing. This is normal. Uh, I, I do have I do have a coconut mug, coffee mug there from you the go. Polynesian. All right. <laughs> so at least perfect. it's kind of setting us up, you know. I didn't have any other plant like <laughs> like mugs. Like who does? No, I didn't. I didn't have any mugs, but I yeah. got the dress. So I'm gonna. I'm working on a hat. I gotta find a hat, and then I really want to make an outfit from the African Queen, like the one that she mm -hmm. actually wears in the African Queen. I want to get that one put together and maybe wear that one to the parks because I think that would be really fun. But it can't look too costumey, so I have to figure that out. Correct. Correct. Okay, so a bunch of people are asking what we're doing, so I feel like we should just start the show. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just start the show. Go for it. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Distry with Kate, the Disney Cicerone, and myself, Kirk, from Walrus Carp. We are embarking on yet another episode of The Jungle Cruise, episode two of our series. Uh, last week, we focused on a lot of concept and just what was the inspiration? So we looked at a lot of uh, materials that kind of set up thematically timeliness and kind of gave us the... Um, like, what's the homage? What's the feel of the Jungle Cruise? But today, we're going to dive in a little bit more about the actual attraction rather than the things that inspired the attraction. And uh, so tonight, we're going to focus on concept art, Harper Goff, and Bill Evans, and landscaping, architecture, and plants. And I have lots of, like, very planty things. Planty things! I yeah, know, I have me lots too. of plants. <laughs> I'm super excited. I know, I can't. Um, I This, you know, of course... There's so many stories about the plant life in the Jungle Cruise, and a lot of them have been told already, but there's a few pockets of this that I think that people have not heard before, so I'm very excited to dig into that. Considering Pocket Fam is a part of our lives, I'm glad that we can jump in some more pockets and hang out. We need more pockets. I, I did get a, a couple of really I, – I always – these are really fun because – Kate and I have like a general loose guideline of like where the rails are for tonight, right? Um, but we don't like – Go, here's what I found. Here's what I found. So mm -hmm. the way I love this is uh, it's like, look at this. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, look at this. Yeah. I didn't see that. So it's a lot of that, which I think I think, like I, I think I'm, yes, it really, <laughs> I think I may have found a couple of things that you've never seen before, but oh, maybe okay. not. Maybe right. not. You never know. You never I mean, know. Like, Sometimes. I've seen that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah but, I know. You do come out of left field sometimes. I'm like, what? So I'm excited. And and I'm well researched for another episode of Distry, so well be prepared to, for that Good as well. Job. Very, very well done. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. So um I know that you are well prepared and excited to talk about Harper Goff. Do you want to kick us off? What you got? What you got? What you got? What you sure. Got? Uh so I mean Harper Goff originally, hang on, let me go back to my notes just about him. And then I do have a picture of him too. Notes. Where did wow. I put? Stop, stop. This is, <laughs> don't, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. <laughs> so uh, Harper Goff, we've known him for his work on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, and that really nice, like fun steampunk. He also was an artist. Uh, so his work on that attraction has led uh, to him and, and obviously working with the animals uh, in uh, the adventures. What was, what's the name of the exploration adventures? Help me out. Why am I blanking? I don't know True, life. True life. True life adventures. Yeah. Thank you. True like, life you adventures. No, no, no. I know. I know. Sorry. True life adventure series, that docu-series that did so well. And he's the one that uh, helped direct it. So yeah. uh, brought him on board. Because originally the Jungle Cruise was supposed to be 
horribly boring. Like horribly, uncontrollably, <laughs> educationally boring and awful. It was supposed to be very scientific uh, observation. Uh, and that's why originally uh, Adventureland was supposed to be that true life Adventureland so that you really were engrossed in education. It's kind of like the Epcot before Epcot was a thing. But so. there, was, there was one joke in the original script, <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to scripting. But there okay. was a one joke in the original script. So it wasn't a great so, joke. There was I forget. One. I don't know if we, uh, we actually looked at him before, but there's, there's one picture of him. There's, there's actually quite a bit. He seems like he he's was... He's a lot older. Yeah, he's... I mean, here's younger. I don't know what he's talking about, but there's a lot of goodwill hunting behind him, uh, some <laughs> chalkboard writing, so it must have been important. Apparently, he was a musician, too, and that looks like one of his kids. I have another... Hang on. I have another picture do, 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 of him in front of some plant life, too. Oh, this is actually him in front of some gators. Very realistic yeah, that's, gators, that's too. that's what I think of him as when I see him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Nothing, nothing says, uh, I worked in Imagineering like a stack filled, like a pile of gators, a whole, yeah. oh, you, hang on, fun fact, do you know, do you know, <laughs> do you know what a group of gators is called? Gators on the water? No. It's called, it's called a float. A float? Yeah, and like hang that. on, there's, there's pleasant. another <laughs> group, <laughs> hang on, a group of gators <laughs> on the land is, is called something else. What? Do so they have yeah. two different names? Yes, yes. This That's is crazy. Wild. It's called a congregation. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So they congregate and they float, which, <laughs> I mean, is kind of what I do on vacation is congregate know, and right. float. Every time I go to Disney, congregate and float. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You could also call them a basque because they like to take in sun as well. So, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to when we do our animal episode because that's going to be a wild episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's the <laughs> yes. Uh, I have concept art stuff. Do you have anything you would like to add to Mr. Goffian? No, I think I think we're, we can move on to concept art because there's so much other things that we can go over. Okay, we've already we already talked about it a little bit last. Like Schweitzer time. Falls, like we'll Schweitzer go over Falls. it later. We'll go over it later. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know which one I want to start with first because I saved these from from last week. Let me find one that I like best. I like um, this one. Okay. I like this one. I think this one's good. Because I, I don't want to start with like colorized versions of things, but very, very early sketch mm -hmm. <clears throat> of the Jungle Cruise. I love the, uh, the Cambodian temple, which we do get pieces of. And the, the other thing that I just love about the concept art is none of these rivers are straight. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it was always going to be winding and... Uh, remember, we're looking at concept art right now. Eventually, we will get into the reality. I'll show you what it looked like before uh, they put anything, then what the land looked like cleared, and then we'll look at what it kind of looks like when they're actually installing plants or putting them in there. But Yeah, and there's the gators. They're still yeah. on there. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. I don't know. I can't see them. How can you see them? What do you got, readers on? Yeah, I can see really well. Oh, there, they're, yeah, they're dude. Right there. Wow. It's f talk about forest for the trees. I couldn't see anything. Yeah, there he is. Basking away. Remember, he's on land. Watch out for Ginger. She yeah. snaps. That's true. Uh, I always love the joke about a crock pot. You know, Ginger and, uh, what was it? Ginger and Frost, because Frost bites and Ginger snaps. And yeah. uh, they just got married. So if you want to get him a housewarming gift, you can always get him a crock pot. It's <laughs> a good one. Yeah, it doesn't get used very often. I actually heard a couple of new jokes too. I I do like um, I have I have some plant jokes. We'll do some plant jokes as we get to the plant part. But oh, great, because yeah. anyway. we can't do this episode without jokes. So <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this whole series needs jokes. Um, I think so, you and I have a I have another one too. I, I bet you have the colorized or decolorized I version have of this so other one. So many, yeah. Do you have okay. the so? I have this one too. Which okay. I really like, which you can actually okay. have Harper Goff's yes. signature on there. I love that one. Um, not only because we see that boat, which we will talk about the boat construction a little bit later, but the boat that came from the African Queen um, is really evidenced in there. You can see that design. Um, but also the, the stump is fascinating to me because it reminds me of something very specific. And I don't know. This is pure speculation. 
that I, I don't know. But this, it reminds me so much of this one every time I see it. When you had said that earlier, I honestly couldn't figure out where you were making the connection. I was totally stumped. <laughs> but it just, the shape of it, the the roots across the bottom, like all the kinds of things about it remind me of it. I don't know if there is any connection, but it's a it's a water ride with animals. And I'm like, I wonder if they just had breezed past through some old yeah. concept art. Because this is the one that's actually from the movie that it's based on. And it doesn't doesn't look anything like that really except for like maybe the bottom for splash mountain so i just it's it's interesting to me how much it looks like splash mountain in chickapin mm-hmm. now yeah it kind of does it kind of does yeah we don't have a lot of time though we it's kind of truncated so maybe we should move along <laughs> oh gosh yeah this is going to be this whole series by the way it's just <laughs> i'm terrible here for jokes. it i love it um and we do get that little like hut that is one here. I've got a picture of that. So I mean, these canoes get there. used. We get we get canoes that are similar to this. <clears throat> I can't at the, see at a the, canoe. So <laughs> yeah, our uh, our first abandoned village. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this does get utilized. <clears throat> also, there is a a villager which showed up in the first iteration and then got changed after the refurb. Yeah, I'm trying to find that picture. I don't know if I have it handy. Um, but we do see that, that little kind of hut. I don't think I have it. It must be in a different section of my files. Um, but we do see that, that little hut comes back. You, as you're looking across the water, you'll see it sitting there. Um, there's actually two, two places we see an abandoned hut. I think in the Florida version has two. Disneyland only has one. Um. Yeah, Florida has two. No, I can't find it. Bummer. Okay. So... Now I'm just getting lost. (laughs) Um, Oh, here. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. Go back to the hut. Okay. So this is kind of what it ends up being in the loading area. It's kind of from a side angle that you can see. Yeah, the Florida version has that as well. And then we also get the abandoned huts with the canoes as our first official real scene scene with a building and architecture. That's... Just before, if you can remember on the Florida one, uh, the gorilla scene with the turned over Jeep. Yes. Look at the color mm-hmm. of the water here. Woo. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's know if that's just film looking. processing. It's, it's, uh, it's yellow. <laughs> and the I remember, trees, I, the poor trees are like what? dying. <laughs> I, think, um, I think Ellie had a behind the scenes tour and they didn't tell her that they, uh, that they churned the dye in Florida via waterfall. I was kind of shocked by that because she was like, the water's yeah, nasty. Is. And I was like, yeah, yeah but it, it really wouldn't be nasty uh, if, unless they didn't die it. But obviously they don't want you seeing all the infrastructure below. Yeah, that's it's called the turbidity is the name of that. The amount of um, dye that they put in the water is the level of turbidity. And mm. uh, the in Disneyland, the Jungle Cruise River, this is just an aside here, the Jungle Cruise River is actually part of what they call the dark waterway system. So it's connected to the rivers of America and to the moat that's for um, Sleeping Beauty Castle. It's all part of one big waterway. A lot of them have like tubes that are underground, pipes underground that the fish and stuff will actually travel through um, to get to the other parts of it. So even if you don't physically see it connected above ground, it's connected below ground. And it used to be more apparent before they changed a lot of things in Adventureland and added New Orleans Square that the river was all connected. I, I love, I remember you geeked out when you were there doing a live once and you were like, look, this is where the tunnel was. And you were like pointing to like a like very tiny little archway somewhere in that neck of the woods. Like I felt like it was by pirates, but I might be oh, confusing. No, spot. that's that's the different. That is the other thing. That's the Lafayette um, placeholder for Eddie Soto for that tunnel they were going to put under rivers of america oh. and then never did so different tunnel a ton- but well, good memory <laughs> right well Ish. not really listen honestly <laughs> uh elephants have the greatest memory of any animal in the jungle i wish i had a memory like that yeah i know all right i got more pictures you ready mm-hmm. yes let's do it all right colorized versions go so there is a black and white version of this image as well more black and white ones Oh, no, you want to go black and white one? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's Did you find here. This I have this one. I also have oh, yeah, this Congo one, Queen. which is even older. Yeah. So the Congo Queen is 
Um, well, hang on, this is the Amazon. It's alley. like the African Queen, right? So it is the Congo Queen is considered the flagship boat of the Jungle Cruise, in case you didn't know. So because it's kind of named after the African Queen, which is where we got the inspiration for a lot of this ride. So that's why this one was featured on the concept art as well. It was the flagship boat, and it was one of the two boats that were actually running on opening day, is the Congo Queen. So um, is that a Harper Goff one? I think it looks like his style. It looks like his style, but it isn't signed. Um, and I'm, but I'm pretty sure when I was looking up images, it was in one of the galleries from an auction. So, um, but I didn't save, of course, the auction site that I got it from. That's fine. So you have that, and then I have this one. This is a black and white one by Bruce Bushman, actually, which is a little bit more moody. And I love, I love the hippos in the front. Yeah, you have some some egrets or herons over on the right too, mm -hmm. which we don't we don't really get a lot of birds on the Jungle Cruise. There's a Actually, snake can't... at the top. Which then... we do get a snake on the tree. That's one of the big gags. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Cambodian temple, or you know, in the background of mm -hmm. this one as well. But I love how this is like from a distance. This is very atmospheric. This is how we want it to feel when you're on the Jungle Cruise. And also, don't you feel like that's reminiscent of the the, um, the Tiki Room has a similar style with that tiered, um, stepped up temple as well? Yes, absolutely. The Sunshine Pavilion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a that. giant lightning rod. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't, you know, it was funny. Uh, in my weather vane video, everyone's like, oh, I didn't realize they were all weather vanes. And I got like two messages that were like, they're lightning rods, bro. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. We're not... <laughs> We're not using – listen, if there was an abacus there, would I call that a calculator? No, I wouldn't. If I saw a sundial, would I go, oh, that's how I tell time? No. It's fun. And yes, they get struck. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I would wonder if the Disneyland ones are. They don't get as much lightning there. No, no. I have the um, Amazon Bell as well over here. It's got a bunch Amazon of bananas Bell. on it. Yeah, hang on. And this one is a uh, Harper Goff. <clears throat> it had a bell. giant spotlight on the front. Life preserver, which we do see the life preservers. And oh. uh, okay, okay. Hang on. I'm, you keep so, going. Keep talking. Okay. I'm gonna find something that goes with that. Okay, that's what I figured. Uh, and then, of course, we have the steamer style boat. So we're getting that engine in the back, which of course we have. And then we have a bunch of bananas hanging off of the. <laughs> The ship, which bananas. doesn't exist. I know. We don't have bananas. There's no, there's no bananas to be seen. Okay, so... Right. Am I going to Life Preserver? Look, no, well, no. Life Preservers are a whole other thing. We'll have to get into that when we get into the boat design. But if you look at the top of that canopy, I was just noticing earlier, um, in Hollywood Studios, if you go in One Man's Dream, there's actually a model of Adventureland um, in the Jungle Cruise as in Disneyland as it was originally planned. And I was looking at this today with Elliot, and he's like, this canopy on this lower boat is not a striped one. Yeah, it's it is thatched. Like, yeah. It's thatched. And Elliot was like, maybe it's a tin roof. I was like, I don't know. It looks kind of like plant plants. So that mm -hmm. now tells me it looks like bamboo maybe strapped together. Yeah, which is funny because in, in this concept art, uh, it looks like it doesn't look thatched or bamboo on the top. It only looks like it on the sides. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's really interesting. Yeah. So at some point, I mean, it made it all the way to the model, but then they never used it for the canopy, which I think is really fascinating. Yeah, I'm curious as to why that never happened. Mm -hmm. So when we get into our boat history we'll have to dig a little deeper in that see if we can find that which another another riveting history about boat roofs coming soon i know you're <laughs> gripping and ready i know <laughs> this is like it's so fun. i i love these episodes because they're so granular you know and yeah. i know this is a niche <laughs> audience but listen if you're listening to this we love you and appreciate you because we know you get it yeah well and the the canopies on the boats are very I'll just say this now because we'll, we'll say it again later when we do more boat design. But the canopies on the roofs, the reason that they um, had the canopy to begin with, you would think it's like, oh, it's for looks. It's for to keep the sun off of you or the rain. Um, those are part of the reasons. But the main reason was so people could not look up and see how, like, unfinished the jungle was. <laughs> 
Hey, listen, they did a pretty good job of two acres of uh, foliage in there. You know, they I mean, did, it's a, it's it a lot like, of plants. It, was, it wasn't as mature, I think, as they would like it to be. So if well, they could it, get people's viewpoints like right here and yeah. not up here, then it's a lot more convincing. So we'll talk I, more about plants in a minute. But I think about, um, you know, they're basically building a jungle, right? They're putting in over 700 large plants and trees. They got to grow in. And it's it's so interesting now, and we'll we'll look at it a little bit later. Um, but the especially in Disneyland, the yeah. horticultural team that's over there, like harvesting at night and trimming, and like it's an alive thing. It's an it ecosystem of itself. It's not when we think about Disney or Disney attractions, we usually typically think that it's magic, right? And it's no, this is a living and breathing attraction, which I think is such a cool. It's so geeky, but it's so cool. <laughs> It is literally living. It's true. Now you'll truly be living with the jungle. <laughs> Do you have this one? Um, gosh, I'll zoom out a little bit. Do you have this one? I don't. Okay. So it's like a, it's not a lot to it. There's a big tree with some vines. And then I feel mm -hmm. like I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is where we get like the little Buddha that we see later and the, the kind of temple artifacts. Yeah. And this is some of the concept art for that. And those, uh, that tree style, uh, it's not palm, hang on. It's an orchid style that, that has that kind of branchiness. I, I actually have a lot of pictures of plants uh, when we're going through it, but hang on, it's not a ficus tree. Let me get to where my... Like a banyan I... tree? No, it's, a, it's um, bromeliads. Oh, bromeliads. Well, bromeliads yeah, are... Yeah, bromeliads. Are but then orchid, there's... Yeah. But there's also like a rainforesty style one that grows on branches really nicely too. And it kind of almost vines down a little bit as well, which is really nice. I think it's this. I, I felt like I was researching Pandora because when you look at some of these plants, like they're, they're very out of this world and you don't really think about them until you sit here and research them. Yeah. I, I can't really think about um, like – Every time I think about Pandora, I think about when I threw my phone in Pandora and then I think about the Grinch tree. <laughs> so I have a little bit of like PTSD from Pandora looking at the plants. Yeah. At least I didn't break it. It didn't you break. You did not break it. But I've chucked my phone because I was, what was so excited. What was, the other, what was the other phrase? It was a goblin? Goblin? goblin bush? Something. Goblin yeah, shrub? Goblin? Yeah, because they, they were getting a they, cease and desist because of Grinch. <laughs> Can't call it a Grinch tree, all right? Sorry. <laughs> Cameron, get over it. When we figure that out, I was I think that's like that was as live as story as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> Me chucking my phone in the parks because I was so excited. Um, I also love for concept art. I do love this kind of overview of Adventureland, which we've looked at before. I think for the Tiki Room, we I did we looked at because this. it was in the background. Yep. But you can the see foreground. the bazaar. That arch back there is the bazaar, which has been around since opening day and is still there. Um, and you can see the original. Um, dock and loading area that had the little observation deck but did not have a second story which was added way way later which we'll talk about when we do our Q episode later on but um, there's this is definitely one of the earlier drawings for this but I also love that you can kind of see how they have the two-sided building here for they have um, what is now Jolly Holiday Bakery and then the other side is the it was Tahitian Terrace but um, a little water buffalo, I think, is on there, too. Yeah, a little water buffalo is on the little arch. I like the water buffalo. Or a longhorn if I'm over in Frontierland. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but only in Florida. You can't see it yeah. from Disneyland. Every time I would go over the crest of uh, Splash Mountain, I would think of, oh, there's a water buffalo. Because mm -hmm. it would be to the right, like directly to the right of the crest of the hill. They're all over in this, these old pictures. Like this one... You can see the actual construction. He's just chilling on the duck. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy. Um, do we have any more concept art? Do you have any? I do. Else? I do. Okay. I have play I, I'm getting into color. Can we get into color? Yeah, I'll go for it. Yes. Okay, sweet. All right, so I've seen a black and white version and a colorized version of this, but this is the loading dock as well. So interesting, though, this one has a horse-drawn uh, little carriage or little wagon, which I don't see at all in ours as any kind of uh, beast of burden lifting anything. And then we do get a second floor, which is actually a lookout tower in this concept art, which I think 
is kind of interesting. And yeah. it's also funny, too, because you wouldn't see this sign, this uh, come again sign, until you're unloading. Because when you're loading, you're getting onto the boat to be behind you. So it kind of makes sense that yeah. it would be there after. Oh, that's interesting. Fact. Over here, uh, again, we're getting another uh, horse-drawn carriage or wagon, another steamer boat. Um, two different style canopies as well. This one is that that vinyl or cloth style one, and that certainly looks like a bamboo thatched one. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting like arrangement as well as the model because this is the exact same placement with, of canopies of which one was in front of the other. And then over here is kind of like, this reminds me of like how the British colonized areas and you get that very much when you're leaving in, at least in the Florida version, when you're leaving Crystal Palace area, you notice it's starting to get more wild and the plant are changing. But like in the middle of the jungle is this Victorian style home. And I kind of get that vibe from these nice steps and there's like an umbrella, like the wealthy aristocrats in the jungle would be, you know, maybe vacationing in this place and taking tours you know, like maybe. an early tropical hideaway, early um, Tahitian terrace mm -hmm. kind of vibe over there. Yeah. That's interesting. But they always kind of planned for it to have some sort of resting spot eatery mm -hmm. over to that side. Kate would be the one under the parasol, and I'd be the one scrubbing the boat, all the muck off the boats. So. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have more. So let's get this one nice and big. This one's really, really nice. So this is that exact same image that you have, but this is from D23, but it's a colorized version of oh, yeah. that exact same picture. If you want to pull that one up, we can do a side-by-side. -side. Yeah, let me, let me find it. The thing that I notice here, too, is you can really see the, um, the detailing on this. It's got a sail on it, which is interesting. It's almost like a houseboat, too, the way it has a coverage on it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, bougie vacations in the jungle were definitely a thing for for British aristocrats or European ones. The only reason why I say that is uh, you can imagine with like the Egyptomania and unwrapping mummies, like all of these things, these oddities, these strange lands. Here, let me see if I can get. There you go. <clears throat> so, yeah. And there's the bazaar you can see in the back again. And you're right about even this, you can see more definition. These are tables in an eatery as well. Yeah. In the front. Well, here, keep that up. I'm going to show the little video I have of um, the actual model. Mm hmm. Let me see. Oh, I can see that too. Uh, Jackie's saying that these boats kind of give her a Moana make way, Wayfinder. So, this is the actual model that they used. Yeah, and you can see the roof. Uh, the only thing that's the difference um, is the placement of it, but there is that lookout. Um, there's one more here. You can see a better front view with the bazaar. And just if you don't know what uh, Kate is referencing, she mentioned it before, but kind of said it in passing. Uh, the One Man's Dream is a location in Hollywood Studios. It's an amazing, like, 15, 20 minute documentary about, like, why Disney even created a theme park. It's beautiful. And Kate and I cry like little babies in there. But before that, before you even get in there, there's all of these real life either models or equipment uh, that they utilized in a lot of their filmmaking techniques or the theme parks themselves. Uh, there's also the Sully meet and greet all the way in the back. But it's a really nice space in Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios doesn't have that many rides. And with Aerosmith going down in a couple of weeks, uh, it's I think that's a great use of your time if everything is jacked. Like, go into this museum, and this is such an amazing model, and um, I guarantee 90% of Hollywood Studios guests don't even know this exists. No, and the some of the stuff in there is reproductions, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is original. Like, yep. um, Walt's um, Granny's Cabin, that was kind of be the original idea for Disneyland, that was Disneylandia, which we've talked about before. Um, that's on display in there that Walt made by hand. So I mean, there was there was the facsimile of his classroom, um, and Marceline is in there as well. Although it's not his desk, they say it's his desk. It's not the original yeah. one is back in Marceline. So that's a that's a little that's not fake fake news, <laughs> fake news. This just in, Disney's been pawning off this debt. I that coming 
Coming to a uh, Disney Cicerone FYP <laughs> near you is, did you know this, this desk was fake and they're pretending that it's real? <sighs> you know that's a good video, though. I know. But it's actually feel, a good video. Don't I feel know. icky about I gotta it. i got to tie something to it because I'm like, oh, I don't know. But, yeah, it's true. It is very Sometimes we need to fake it until we make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's also there's a model of... Uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle in Disneyland. It is a reproduction, but it's actually a really uh, interesting model. And then they have a lot of, um, gosh, they have the Cinderella Castle model in there as well. There's all kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great exhibit to go in and check out. Even if you only have a couple minutes to breeze through it, I would highly recommend just giving it a look. Yes, you should. All right, I got two more. You ready? Okay. Yeah. All right, more visuals. So I have uh, this awesome view of, um, which this would be our more tribal. Obviously, this got refurbed. You do see uh, the tribe in the background, huts, as well as the <laughs> canoes again. What are we looking at? I have this picture of Walt that I just kind of feel like goes with that. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> get him a close shave, you know? <laughs> He's got it. And that's a spear, right? You can see underneath his, uh, his tricep that goes down. So it's not like, like a little tiny dagger. Like he's, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely a theme they cycled out of the jungle cruise later, which we'll yes. talk about in yep. later episodes, but it's history. Then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. These are things that we talk about. Uh, let's talk about a giant flamingo for a second. Uh, so another colorized representation, we do get that eatery in the upper left-hand corner. We do get our scouting, uh, from the launch area, but look at the size oh of gosh. that bird. Why, Why on earth? so big. I don't know. There's two <laughs> giant flamingos next to a skipper that boat before. that look. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very strange. Although this is the first time that I'm seeing um, a waterfall. So I think that's kind of unique. You do see rapids, but you also see a waterfall. So like this section right here is the rapid section, which is very African queen. And then we have waterfalls here. Now we're getting a lot more animal uh, life, butterfly. like our butterflies show up. We have monkeys, we have uh, gators, elephants, you have giraffe or long neck zebras. Uh, then you have hippos. Uh, the canoes and the huts are back here. A giant tortoise. And this, that I looks like a tiger. Florida. This feels like a Florida sketch to me. It could because, be. Because we don't have canoes in Disneyland and we didn't have the butterflies. This this very much. And that's yeah, why the flamingo might be there because of Florida. It might be. Mm -hmm. It totally might be. But uh, I don't and know. And the green just, canopies. The green canopies kind of give it away. I think that that might be a Florida one. The I will I will research more on this specific one. However, the only thing I would say is I look at the style of art and this doesn't really scream... 60s to me but right. maybe i'm Unless maybe i'm on work till next week you come back no. and report me. <laughs> <laughs> fine i'll look it up <laughs> here i'm gonna um, label it fine where this is from homework <laughs> <laughs> um i have this concept art of schweitzer falls um you have a beautiful little oh that's print. so that's that is gourd that would be like great hanging up mm-hmm I don't actually know who did this one. I want to say probably Harper Goff if I had to guess because of his styling. But um, that's one of the... I have a couple that are kind of in the series here. Oh, where did I put the other ones? I had a couple in this series. Gosh, I'm more disorganized than I planned this week. guess that's the only one I've got to show you right now. But okay. I, I love that one. Oh, and this... Did I do this one already? This is another one of Schweitzer Pulse. Did we do this one? With the... Um, we did not know, and that mm -hmm. and that's to me that's the closest representation of what it actually turned out. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a great one. So heading to the back side of water, O two H, and again it's the Congo Queen, which is the flagship boat for Jungle Cruise. It bothers me immensely when they don't do uh, the periodical joke. I think that's so funny. <laughs> now, like. When they, they have to do the backside of water joke because they've learned that guests, if they don't do it, guests get really angry. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it's now it's required. I don't know do if that. the O2H is required though, because no, sometimes I hear is, backside sure. of water has to happen, but yeah. O2H sometimes happens. Um, and I've only got the, um, 
uh, O2H, uh, you guys think that's funny, but, uh, you know, it's occasion or periodically it gets a laugh. Something like that was, <laughs> was the tagline. It was a good one. Okay. Uh, Bill Evans potentially. Yeah. So we transition here to talking about some landscaping. Mm -hmm. Good. So I, I can show you, uh, the land of, of Disney prior to them building anything. Let me I show we that. Have to, before we get to Bill Evans, I think we have to talk about how they laid out that river because that sounds like where we're headed here for how they actually got it because that's all Harper Goff. Yeah. So, well, why don't why don't I pull up and just show people what Disneyland looked like, like the actual physical land that they bought before anything was built? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. It's it's very funny looking at this because it's just so crazy. I love. When you can take something, and this is the beauty of having a dream, is taking nothing and building it into one of the most amazing magical places. I think about that every time I'm on the monorail and I'm riding from the Contemporary to the TTC uh, in Walt Disney World, it is a swamp. It is a straight up swamp. And they had to look at that for aerials and make a lot of decisions based on locale and highway usage the same thing happens here you know in terms of uh access and ability and and the reason and the selection of property and pieces but to look at these fields of orange groves and the highway bisecting and just going okay let's make this i don't yeah. know it just is amazing to me yeah it's pretty incredible what they did in the middle of the desert no, not going to lie. And uh, I mean, desert with orange groves. But <laughs> um, do you know where the orange groves, this land actually is tied to a family that has a history on in, in the land now. But um, there was, um, if we're gonna, I think we should just mention the Dominguez family because we're talking about orange groves. And the Dominguez family has um, 200 year plus roots in this area. Get it, roots? California. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, they had a remote ancestor named Jose Antonio Yorba, who arrived in California with the Spanish army and was awarded 62,000 acre land grant by the King of Spain in 1769. Um, so that area then covers what is now parts of Santa Ana, Tustin, Orange, and Costa Mesa, which is this area here. Um, and then many generations later, Paul Dominguez, who is related to Yorba's great grandson, Bernardo Yorba, owned a 10 acre orange grove in Anaheim, which is kind of what we're looking at right here. Um, Paul then married his wife, Laura, in 1920, and um, then they together they built a two-story Spanish-style home in 1925 near where the present-day entrance is to Pirates of the Caribbean um, and Cafe Orleans. Um, but their son, Ron Dominguez, uh, was born in that home in 1935. So we always remember, you know, C.B. Wood did a lot of kind of like sketchy deals to try to convince people to move off of their property so they could make this happen. And uh, one of the deals he made was with the Dominguez family. And um, they said they would move and they would accept um, selling their land, but only if they allowed um, a piece of family history to stay behind, which is in a Canary Island date palm that was planted in 19, um, 1896 by an early rancher. Um, and then one member of the family was even married beneath it. This was like, like basically just in their front yard. It was like the tree they planted. So um, Walt was more than happy to oblige, but the tree actually stood in the middle of section C of, of like a projected parking lot at the time. And so he ordered that it be carefully bald, lifted tenderly from its home and trundled all 15 tons of it into Adventureland. That's what Bill Evans said. So that tree is still in Disneyland today, which Kirk is showing you there. It is called the Dominguez Palm um, for that family. And it is the second oldest tree in Disneyland. The oldest is actually a dwarf bolander pine in Storybook Land Canal Boats. But this is, uh, it's, it's there. It's huge. It's gigantic because it's from 1896. <laughs> so it's not the oldest living thing, but almost. And uh, they have moved it. I think they moved it when they expanded. They, they, moved, they changed the queue around. They moved it a little bit, but it's pretty much just been there for since the Disney has moved it slightly from the property. So is that uh is that all you got on the palm? Is that all I got on the specific palm? I do have Ron Ron Dominguez then um so he was given a job as a 
as a ticket taker um, on opening day in Disneyland. And then later he kind of moved up his way inside Disneyland. He worked his way up and he was eventually became the executive vice president um, of Disneyland. When he retired in 1994, he was honored with a window on Main Street above Market House, which Kirk has there, which um, I love. It says property management and we'll care for your property as if it were our own in nods to his family. And they did own it. Home. Yeah. <laughs> Disney Disney now has his old home, his childhood mm-hmm. home. So, and then he did unfortunately pass away in 2021, but he was remembered on Main Street um, and honored there. It's on um, Market House. It's where you can find that window. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See, look, I plan. Ja- Jackie goes, Kirk, that was perfect timing. Yeah. Well, when you set up your slides and you know what to talk about. Uh, all right. Here's here's my moment. <laughs> Here's my moment. moment, (laughs) Nope, nope. Here's my moment. Have you ever heard of the Jungle Cruise Survival Guide written May 5th, 1938? (laughs) (laughs) No. Oh, you haven't? I've never heard of that. Oh, oh, amazing. Oh, I can't believe that. Something you haven't heard of. So this was, uh, they created this in the 1994 refurbishment. But why on earth am I talking about something in 1994? Great question. That's because the Dominguez Palm is in it. Can I read an entry of the, and so this was, this was a uh, given to skippers and it incorporated now a little bit of storyline that was etched into the revision that happened to Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye around the 2005 refurb. So there, there is an entry in here and it's obviously this is just storyline, uh, but it's fun, but it talks about the Domin- Dominguez Palm. July 29th, I'm reading you an entry from Jeremy Livingstone. (laughs) July 29th, 1933. I have noticed that the humid tropical air is causing our boathouse to deteriorate at an alarming rate. Paint is peeling everywhere, and the roof above our supply storage area still needs to be replaced before the rainy season starts. Speaking of repairs, Duke rammed the boathouse just past the loading dock with his boat last night. The maintenance bay is in danger of collapsing into the river. We had to use a palm tree to prop up the second (laughs) story and use railing from the side of the boathouse to support the dispatch office as it began to separate from the building. The temporary fix will have to do as there is no money for proper repairs. I place Duke on ticket and booking responsibilities until further notice. Jeremy Livingstone. Oh, I love that. That's so great. Well, well done, Kirk. Well done. And you can see that they put the fast pass for Indiana Jones right below that palm tree. Of course, it's not there anymore because we don't do that. But um, so it's it's literally by the exit of Indiana Jones. And it's kind of almost feels you can see it's just on the bottom there. It feels like it's kind of propping up that corner of the Jungle Cruise queue. So that is um, wonderful. Fine. Well done. Well done, my friend. So I also have a, I don't, this may or may not be fact, okay? I have a a story that is maybe what they told cast members. Like this is like a more of a deep dive on the Dominguez uh, Palm to like give it a little bit of of story. According to this story, this legend that sometimes skippers would tell guests, I don't know. I, I haven't been on that version. I don't know if it's a part of the stories or if they even point it out. Did they point it out? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. So this was written. I don't. I can't find the script. I, I desperately search for the script. So this is secondary at best. Still needs research. According to the story, the Dominguez palm is rare and valuable tree that can only be found deep in the jungle. The tree is said to have magical properties and is sought after by jungle adventurers and treasure hunters, specifically the SEA. Story goes on that Dominguez Palm was discovered by a Spanish explorer named Don Diego de la Dominguez, who was said to have discovered the tree on one of his jungle expeditions. And the tree was so valuable that Don Diego claimed it for himself and transported it back to Spain, where he kept it as his own personal treasure. Hmm. So they say it's, it's, there's, they're saying there's even a joke behind it, but I don't even get the joke. I'm going to read the joke, but it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe you'll understand this. 
Um, but it's found in a dangerous area guarded by dangerous animals, treacherous terrain, and the tree is often used as a punchline where the skippers say, and if you look to your left, you'll see the Dominguez palm, or as we like to call it, the tree that got away. And I don't understand that. It makes no sense to I me. I think I've heard that joke before. Um... But I, I don't understand what the, what the joke is referencing. Like, I'm missing that one. And I watched a couple POVs, and I couldn't catch it because it, it'd be right in the beginning. You know, because Indy's on the right when you're coming out of the load. So I, I don't know yeah. where it is. I don't know. I've got to think about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the joke is about. Yeah, I don't know either. Way. But that's all I I mean, it's... it moved. So, but I don't know if that's what they're referencing. The fact Yeah, that like moved. the tree got away, like meaning that it was a mobile tree, you know? Yeah. Like it, it, it moves. Because it has it moved more than move. once. So mm -hmm. maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Um. Christina's asking if we've reached out to Kevin Lively, the, the former Imagineer, for any cool facts because he's worked on it. And we've, we've actually chatted with him on lives and things, and he's gotten um, some really amazing information for us that we'll talk about in later episodes mm -hmm. when we get to the newer Jungle Cruise stuff. I did ask him about the script, the original Jungle Cruise script, because I knew he had access to that at one point. And he told me I'd have to like break into some house in California to... <laughs> get to it now and i decided i don't want to be a criminal so probably won't be doing that <laughs> you should probably find the house and reach out to the owner and be like hey yes. do you have <laughs> i know uh, like some other people we know that maybe did some things like that for the jungle cruise right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh jackie asks and i don't know if there's any truth to this was there is there any plaque or anything that represents it and just and points out I don't Anything think about so. the Dominguez Not that palm? I've seen. No, okay. it's just a giant tree. You would miss it if you didn't know. Um, there's just that subtle window on Main Street if you know the history of it. And but literally, I think ev almost everybody who knows even a little bit about Disneyland history usually knows about the Dominguez palm. It's a pretty um, famous story by this point. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a secret. <laughs> so much is just yeah. a story. It's it's knows. nice that the it's um well the you know what's cool about it is it's a throwback to who originally owned the land. And I think that's a nice uh little historical nod to the original owners. And it's crazy that it was yeah. Spanish owned as well. Like I think mm -hmm. that's wild. Like I, I sometimes I don't I, I don't remember that we were foreign occupied, you know? Yeah. Like I get I get it, you know. There was like, a, had, there was an America before America. Right. It's, <laughs> It's, but it's, it's like so funny cause we've been here and it's, we haven't even been here that long, but you know, no, it's uh, 200 years goes pretty quick, you know? Yeah. So. No kidding. So, um, should we talk about landscaping? Cause I feel like we should, we should go there. Yeah. Can I show, I'm just, I like the stark contrast of this. So I'm going to go back to my original image, which showed the lands okay. prior to some clearing. Uh, but I just want to show clearing, uh, and then we can get on to Bill Evans and landscaping. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, the, it's really interesting. Do you, why don't you talk to about this? Cause you clearly have something about this and then I'll talk about maybe the way we make the river. I just, yeah. I mean, so I just think it's, it's interesting to see, uh, how much that they had to remove to physically build, uh, Disneyland itself. Uh, I, I'm not familiar enough with the highway structure, uh, but I would have placed Would the jungle cruise have been here. No, uh, or it would have been it's here. On the other side. It, yeah, it's hard to tell from that picture, but it would be in the left side most likely. Okay, I'll I'll monkey with that while you're. Because Harbor uh, Boulevard would have been on the right, and then Catella okay. on the the bottom. My Walt Disney World showing. I'm so embarrassed. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to just maybe travel out to Disneyland. Just saying. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'll talk maybe a little bit about the actual like construction of how did they make this river happen, you know, in the middle of this orange grove. So what they actually did for the trees, since there was a whole bunch of orange trees there, they wanted to keep as many as possible. So what um, Bill Evans did was um, they actually made like a sketch and then they, they put it on top of an aerial view of Disneyland. Um, so they made a sketch of where all they wanted their trees to go for the Jungle Cruise, and they put it on top of the thing, and then they're like, okay, we want to keep this tree and this tree and this tree. Anything that was going to stay in the original elevation, those are the ones that they marked to keep. Um, and they did that for all of Disneyland, not just the Jungle Cruise. But um, we've told this story before. I'll just mention it real briefly that um, it didn't exactly go as planned because they, they marked all the trees they wanted to keep. 
um, with green and the ones they wanted to remove with red, like little tags or ribbons. Um, but the bulldozer operator who was taking out a lot of those trees was colorblind. So he just kind of took out a ton of them that they more than they had planned. And they were worth $500 a piece. They were not cheap trees. And it was very hard to find mature trees. So this was kind of a little bit of a catastrophe to have happened. Um, but we did keep a few orange trees did end up staying in the Jungle Cruise because of them laying it out like that. I did find a map overlay. Um, so, all right. Pre-clearing. Post-clearing. Mm -hmm. And this is the exact same angle with the, you can see the highway in the background. It's just, hang on, can I, uh, I used to be able to grab this thing and rotate. Okay, I guess the double click doesn't work, Never mind. I was trying to do, you know how you can like be fancy and like make it like three, I probably have to like click yeah. shift or something. Is it shift or something fancy? No, it's not. Control it's maybe. It's fun to watch you no. struggle though. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I remember you used to be able to like, like rotate this and pretend it's like Google Earth. Uh, but you can see, so, Adventureland, Jungle Cruise is here. Remember this highway, because that's going to be in the back right of our photos. So our Jungle Cruise would be in this neck of the woods right yeah. here, because there's there's the highway where the pen is. And then highway again, so Jungle Cruise would be this neck of the woods. Yeah, so um, when they actually, so do you have construction footage of showing <coughs> them actually grading it? Um, I don't. I okay. I have a bunch of Bill Evans photos next, and I do have like I, the one photo I probably have. I'm sure you have. This is like the most one of the most famous ones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is funny because every time I see that, I was like, that car's super old for that era. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> it's like 1950. So what, it was what going. It was going on. <laughs> I don't know who it is. <laughs> like, did they? Is that, what is that? A horseless carriage? I know. I'm like, that's such a like belongs on Main Street, USA. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just talk about Bill Evans since you've got that up. Let's talk about, it was actually Morgan is his actual name. Morgan Bill Evans is his, the lead in this project. And then his brother was Jack Evans. Um, so he, they were hired to put a green frame around all those adventures and rides. That's how Bill put it. Um, he grew up around plants, Bill did. Um, his father cultivated a three-acre garden with unusual plants, and then he did a 1920 military tour of duty, which allowed uh, Bill to ha harvest a whole bunch of exotic seeds from all over the world, like South, a South Africa, Australia. He just collected seeds wherever he, wherever he went. Um, then he began wholesaling rare, rare plants in 1931 to local nurseries, and then opened a landscaping business with Jack in 1936. They had all these unusual plants, which actually made them very highly valuable to a lot of the Hollywood socialites. Um, so the, he had clientele like Clark, uh, Clark Gable, Greta Garbo, Elizabeth Taylor, and Walt Disney. Um, so you would say that uh, while you're more of a fancy pants, uh, Bill would be more of a fancy plants. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I love this quote from The Imagineering Story, which I just happen to have next to me. It's so heavy. Um, where they say his plants were like his children, and he knew the history of every tree he planted, whether grown from seed or transplanted from somewhere else. So his plants were like his children. <laughs> this is a ridiculous quote, Bill. What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> I guess you you like you you have to nurture them like kid. I get it. I get. Well, what you're he didn't say from, that. Though. That was the Imagineering story. That oh, that was that. The, just to be very clear. I, oh, okay. They, I was like, they I was said like, it was like. <laughs> I was like, Bill, what are you saying there, bud? Um. So then he his first thing that he his first encounter with Walt um to do to work for him was actually in the homely homely um homely hills, hills. to landscape the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad, which was Walt's backyard train, which we've mentioned before. Um, and Walt was so pleased with his work that he asked him to landscape Disneyland and hired him in 1954. And I love this quote is my favorite from Bill. He said, we landscaped all of Disneyland in less than a year with a maximum of arm waving and a minimum of drawings. So 
seems I have, accurate for Disney. I have a, so this comes from the Walt Disney archives, and there's a quote from 1954 uh, where Walt is asking Bill and his brother Jack, and the quote is, how about you fellows landscape in Disneyland for me? <laughs> <laughs> that seems accurate. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, like after the 1952 doing his backyard, he's like, eh, you guys can do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yeah. He, he liked their work. Um, I think it's interesting that Bill Evans actually thought that regular jungles were boring. Just like Harper Goff <laughs> thought that like jungles were boring. This is like a common theme with creators. Well, okay, so so I have a, I have a good jungle line here, right? So uh, this is again from the Walt Disney Archives. So all the eighty acres of Anaheim gets landscaped uh, by by Bill from these orange groves into all the amazing things with with bamboo and ficus and palms that can tower as tall as seventy feet overhead, uh, and the two acre man made jungle, which was for the Jungle Cruise, as Bill described in quotes. The best darn jungle this side of Costa Rica. <laughs> I know. I love that one. This is a good one. Um, he said, we were trying to capture the armchair traveler thing and get all kinds of textures and all kinds of effects. The palms, the tree ferns, the uh, philodendrons, you get that kind of man-eating atmosphere. The giant bamboo was not actually a jungle denizen, but it fills a role conveniently. You might discover a rather pedestrian castor bean plant, but the effect is good and it adds to the texture. So he's like, let's just create all these different exotic plants that are from everywhere even though, because he didn't like a regular jungle. So he's like, I'm going to make this like fantastic Hollywood version of a jungle. I need plants. to rope drop Jungle Cruise because Kevin Lively and Mark Davis are stuck in my brain and I need to do a carnivorous plant video. And I have, mm -hmm. all, I have everything else that I need to do it, including your amazing book that you gave me. Uh, but I just don't have a good video of the plants. You can see them. They don't look the same. No, Kevin, they don't. You did You did awesome. Because I love eyes. Yeah, I need I need the googlies at the top, <laughs> you know. But I think they did okay. they did what they could, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have to make compromises. But um, so the Jungle Cruise plants. Um, the reason this was actually the, one of the first rides that was ever constructed in Disneyland, mainly because they had to get the plants in so they could start growing. Because they only had a year till Disneyland opened, and can you imagine constructing an entire jungle in the middle of like a desert slash orange grove in a year? Like that's kind of a tall order. Mm. Tall Seventy order. foot tall order. Seventy foot tall order. <laughs> uh, I have I have a good quote too from Terry Palmer just about how they had to use all these like. There was unusual plants that Bill wanted to use, but also they had all these orange trees. So this is Terry Palmer, the Imagineer. In the Jungle Cruise, there's a group of orange trees that most people would never recognize because Bill planted them upside down. He decided the gnarled roots of the orange trees looked like suitably exotic jungle branches, which I couldn't find pictures of what they would look like now. And I almost feel like it's so overgrown that it would have to be a better picture from when they first opened, oh, I don't you know, think or even a video. Now. I think they took them out. I think the only, as far as I know, I believe the only thing that's left maybe is that Dominguez palm. And like, I think a lot of the other foliage has been like replaced over the years. Mm. Um, but for sure, I have not, I don't think I've seen the orange, the upside down orange trees it at all. Free, it freaks me out too, because I'm so dumb and I don't think of like how to plant things. But I, this guy just like takes a tree and just flips it upside, flips down. upside down. Like I, I just think like, don't the roots like how does that grow? How does Do that even work? The picture. Well, it's not. It's not growing. It's not living. It's just wood. Have you seen well, it? No, that's what I'm saying. Is I haven't oh, seen a picture. I a picture that's what it. I. It's in that early footage. Um, I think it's even in the opening day report. Um, but it's um, what they look like. <sighs> I didn't think to pull a picture of that for some reason, but what they are is just, it just looks, it's like wood that's upside down, like a, like stump and it looks like it's, but it's got, dead. It's dead. And then they put moss okay. on top is what they did. They put uh, like a moss and maybe orchids and stuff. They put like a living thing on top of it to make it look like it well, was like, well, that would make sense with, alive. uh, wasn't the, growing. the orchid style that they have too. uh, the, those same ones that we talked about, hang on, where are they at? Uh, those are the, Ephophytes and the bromeliads, which I can, I might as well show them right now because I, I think it's just, you can see what you show those. This, I'm gonna look for a picture old of this mossy stuff. kind of. Bromeliads. 
I just lost audio on Kate Ideal. I know. I lost you. I got you. Okay. Yeah, I lost you for a second, too. I was like, oh, no, it's quiet. It's too quiet. (laughs) It's too quiet. (laughs) You know, this is probably what they were going for. Yeah, the bromeliads and the orchids. Mm -hmm. uh, Well, here, because I feel like we're stuck in a loop now. (laughs) I have more pictures. Can I show more pictures while you're looking for whatever you're looking for? Please go for it. Okay, cool. Okay, so here's uh, here's Bill. Like, I don't know what he's looking at, but uh, I just love they're still in construction, (laughs) right? Because you can see there's there's tons of things that are not filled out. You get the Mark Twain, though, in the background, but he's just staring up. I'm assuming at a tree. Or something. Maybe he's into birds. I don't really know. Or maybe one of his kids, which is how he views the plants. We saw this one already. Excavation. My progeny. Right. Yeah. Uh, I also have more excavation and kind of what it looks like pre. You can see them moving. A tree is going to be on the back of a flatbed over here in crates. And then I have another one which is really cool of them lifting a tree with a crane. And you can see some grading on a hill as well and them excavating land. And it's, it, once again, I just am so amazed at, you know, this kind of reminds me of the Magic Kingdom parking lot. I still don't know what that land was taken for uh, and why it just exists. Like there's all of this built up dirt. And the only thing I could think of is that maybe it was left over from excavating uh, the Seven Seas Lagoon, and they just left it there to use for other purposes. But I need to figure that out. I've always been curious about that berm area. I'm not really sure what they're using it for. Uh, and then I also is that have... the berm for the train tracks? It's probably the berm for the train tracks. <sighs> maybe. Because no, it's right no, behind no. Right no, 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 no. This is, this is in the actual... Hang on. Let me pull up. Let me go back to my Google Maps, and this time, instead of being at Disneyland, Disney World, this has nothing to do with the Jungle Cruise. This is just me on a tangent. But okay, I, I found a picture. Okay, go see. for it. You got a picture. Oh, wait, now it's loading. Just okay, there. ready? Here, I, I'll show you what I was going to show. I need to figure out what this is for. This is totally random, but I'm just thinking about it because it reminds me of the dirt we were looking at. So Seven Seas Lagoon is man-made. We help build this up so we're at uh, a floor above so you can have the utilidors above Magic Kingdom. But down here in the middle of the parking lot, this is a giant hill. This is not just just like grass and flat. This is a huge hill, and I don't know why it exists. I have to figure it out. That is interesting. Because why wouldn't it just be parking all the way across? Yeah, that would make more sense. Every time I drive around it, I go, what is this thing and why does it exist? Okay, mystery, mystery. We're gonna have to figure it out. It's a ooh, ooh, ooh. I like that. That's so clever. It rhymes. Um, here you can see the stump at the bottom. That's what the upside down orange trees look mm. like. They've got little like, okay. plants. It just gets more pixelated if I zoom in, but that's that's essentially what they look like. It's not like okay. anything to write home about. It's just they're supposed to look what like cypress. It looks trees like a chicken foot. A chicken the one on the foot. Left. <laughs> doesn't it doesn't it look they, like a little chicken foot and it wasn't just orange ones it was also um <laughs> walnut trees walnut trees were like that as well so um let me find my notes here because i had more about the plants so he said for the different types of plants that they had he said we pick material from brazil Africa, India, Asia, and Malaysia. We pushed it all together. It's all quite compatible in that sense that it all has that lush, vigorous growth. When we attempted to do in planting the jungle was to make it look as though we had nothing to do with it. That's how Bill Evans put it. Um, And then, um, so it was actually Harper Goff's idea to repurpose the walnut trees um, and turn them upside down to get that kind of mangrove effect. That's what it is, it's a mangrove. Um, from the gnarled roots on which we ta- we grafted to the top half of the orange truncated also to get the branches. So they actually like grafted an orange on top of an upside down walnut tree. Like they just did a little like Frankensteining of the trees to make it get the look that they wanted. So. I love that. Uh, hang on. I might as well tell this joke because it's a good one talking about plants. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You derailed me. It's okay. Let me get on track. 
So the the joke about high biscuits, low biscuits is uh, when a skipper will point up and go, that plant's called high biscuits. This plant below is called low biscuits. The plants in the water are called sea biscuits. And then I just heard this one the other day. The plants that are leaning over real crooked, those are called limp biscuits. <laughs> so I, I'd never heard that one before. And then I came up with an original, Kate. I came up with an original joke. Okay, ready. And see those, see those plants over there? Don't look at them because they're none of your biscuits. That's a good one, right? That's a good original Jungle Cruise joke. And I will remember that forever. <laughs> Made yeah. me laugh. So I'll give you that. Yeah, it's a good one. It's good. Okay. I would like to add into this conversation uh, that landscaping was really particular for Disneyland. And there was kind of, there's multifaceted of like, how do you build in the middle of an orange grove slash desert all of this plant life? So for, for $360,000 is all they had to spend on all of the landscaping of all of Disneyland. That's, that's it. Nothing. That is nothing. zero money. Nothing. Zero money. So first up is plant selection, which I'll get more into detail on plant selection, but I want to talk about a couple of other points. Soil preparation was huge because you got to remember this is a desert. So I did find that they used a lot of, uh, which was affordable and cheap, organic. So lots of organic material and fertilizer. Yep. We're talking about poop from local farms. <laughs> so uh, that was used to, to kind of do that. And then they also had to have uh, soil that would retain the water rather than drain out. Sand is actually not really good. Sand uh, just drains all the way through. So they yeah. needed something that was like more like clay-based bottom so that it would hold in all the water because uh, they wanted it to naturally be uh, really, really moist and humid and like a canopy, right? And the yeah. same thing is, is in Walt Disney World. And that's why even when you're going through the beginning parts, that all the misting, that's not like magic. That's straight up for the plants, like to increase the humidity level so that they thrive a little bit better, which yeah. leads me to irrigation. There's all of this drip irrigation, which you can actually see on uh, right before Schweitzer Falls. There's all of this like hose equipment that's exposed. I got to take some video of it. I'm always live streaming and not paying World. attention in Disney World that yes. you that you can really, really see that it's not very well hidden. And I saw it the other day and I was like, that's just like a watering box. And then you can <laughs> see all the, but that's interesting because they had to put all the, all the drip irrigation in. Uh, topography, because they also had to build hills, valleys, trenches, which I will show a picture of in a second. And then of course, landscaping, uh, with all the rocks and the water features and the waterfalls and, you know, all that to add in. Hang on. I do have a picture that is colorized. It's a color picture. And I just like this one because uh, this is where we're heading. We'll eventually get into this more. Uh, but then when they were riding around in the Jeep in the trenches yeah. while building this. So this was where the boats would eventually go. Uh, but pointing out kind of the scenes and figuring out how to landscape this. But this is early landscaping. You can see it's it's turning more into a jungle than our previous shots, which are much more sandy, deserty, flatty, you know? Yeah. We'll definitely have to talk about that maybe next week. We can talk about the construction and then mm -hmm. actually like plotting out that river just because so for interest of time, we'll stick with the plants for now. But that, Yeah, there's not enough time yeah. to get into that right now. No, but I'm... Um, I so I love how they they didn't have any money for this project obviously they had some money but not enough to actually build a jungle plus all of the rest of Disneyland if they actually outright bought all these plants so the way that they found these plants I call it the hunt for trees because <laughs> like how I refer to it for myself because it's just hilarious how they got some of these trees so um Bill Evans said we would call cities to see if they were tearing out trees for improvements and go and buy them. And they got many that way. Um, of course, they had the Santa Monica, Santa Ana and Pomona freeways were all being constructed at the same time as Disneyland. So what they did was they they contacted them and they said, like, hey, like they're, they're kind of taking out these big palm trees. And they said, we'll give you twenty five dollars per tree. And they were just going to take them to the dump like they were going to rip them out, put them in the dump. They were done. And he said, I'll give you twenty five dollars per tree to not touch them. He's like, don't scratch them. Don't bump them as you're like ripping everything out. Um, and so um, that was that was his fee. They kept kept away the wrecking ball from the trees was twenty five dollars per tree, which is 
really cheap. Um, and then he said as fast as we could, we'd get in there and put a six by six foot box around the roots, which was anywhere from five to 10 tons a unit, and then pick up the tree and drive it down to Anaheim and give it a new home, <laughs> which just tickles me to think about them putting a tree in the back of their truck. Yeah. So here we go. Here them. we go. Here's, here's a crane <laughs> with a are. tree in a box. <laughs> and then here is a truck with a tree in a box. There you are. So some of them were palm trees, some of them were walnuts, sometimes they were orange trees too. I think so, it's mostly walnuts and so other kinds. I do have I do have some of the palm trees. So some of the palms that they used are these are called oil palms. So if you've ever had palm oil, which is used in a lot of a lot of foods, and they actually take uh, this fruit that comes out of it and they basically uh, using a lot of pressure pull out the oil from them. But uh, these were the oil palms. They also had coconut palms, and they also had royal palms. So there you go, some royal palms. Yeah, and I mostly think of the royal palms when I think of, you know, this in my brain. I think I think mm -hmm. of the royal palms. They're the big, tall ones, the kind of iconic Californian palms. Um, yep. But they got all kinds of trees that way. Um, they also ran ads in the Orange County newspapers in search of anyone with a big tree they just didn't want anymore. So they had like literal ads in the newspaper, which I did try to find one. I was like, it would be great to find one, but I haven't located it yet. I'm sure it exists because of all the micro well, I mean, out there. But... Yeah, I was going to say, there's got get on your Lexus Nexus, you know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, I think that's like more legal stuff, but yeah. <laughs> um. They also, in the evenings, they would go hunting trees in the neighborhoods um, with Bill, Bill would go with Harper Goff and they'd go driving around the neighborhoods looking for trees. They said they, we drove around in nice, all around in places like Pasadena seeking great big nice trees. We'd go up to people and ask them any chance you'd, you're tired of that tree and we'd, we'll give you $200 and carry it away. Most of the people looked at us like it was some kind of joke and they just like laughed at them. Um, they, but there was one in Beverly Hills that they drove by all the time on their route from from um, their nursery to Anaheim, and it became kind of an obsession for Bill Evans. Um, he said he found this one. It was a banyan tree in Beverly Hills, and he said it was a wonderful tree. And each time we passed it, we talked about getting it, and it became kind of a joke. And finally, I thought, what have we got to lose? So Harper Goff rang the doorbell and asked the owner if he'd consider parting with the tree. And they would replace it with a flower bed or anything that he wanted. The man laughed and said, that big son of a bee there, I'm so tired of that thing. <laughs> because it was blocking all the sunlight for his house. It was gigantic like this picture. So thanks, Kirk. Um, so he says, the trouble was, uh, Bill said, the trouble was it took me a week to convince Jack that the owner had actually told me that I could have it. It was the tree that went around the original Burmese temple and we got it for nothing. So basically they got it for the cost of replacing it with a smaller tree. Um, and I do have pictures of that original one um, by the temple. Let me see if I can find it. It's really unique, the root structure of this thing, because it's almost like it's not a specific trunk. It's it's all these multiple pieces that go into. It's really wild. Mm hmm. So it was right by this temple, which has now been, uh, it changed, I think, in the 60s when they, they changed a lot of the the jokes for the Jungle Cruise and did Mark Davis's updates. They actually changed this. So I don't, I I am going to go look next time I'm there, but I'm pretty sure this tree isn't there anymore. But I'm going to go double check because um, I looked, because it, look, it looks like this now near that. And I was like, obviously, I don't have a picture of the trees. I was looking at the tiger. <laughs> but... There's um, something about this tree. I mean, look at this one. This one has uh, has like a temple, like face into it. Yeah. Well, and that is, there is one like that that is in the ride right now because it's right across from Indiana Jones. So that makes me wonder if that is what it is. This is what it looked like when they installed it. Is that what you're looking at? Is that that's the one from Disneyland? I don't know. Because that looks like the one that might be in Disneyland. It might be. Um, I thought I had a picture of it, but I don't think I do. So, Stonehead. Uh, no, this is this is in this is a banyan tree in Wat Mahathat Ayutthaya. Okay, so that <laughs> might be inspiration. For this what is they an ancient have. ancient Buddha one, and why is the Buddha? Yeah, because if you even if you look at, hang on, I found another picture. 
that is very reminiscent of what you have going on here. But clearly, Buddhas and banyan trees are a thing. That is a thing. Um, now I just want to find it. <laughs> I might have to look later because I don't know if I can find that one. Either. Oh, you know what? Here, I'll give you, I'll give you other trees while you're looking. Uh, uh, so some other trees that were used, they used ficus trees. And you can see this one's just out somebody's home in California. They also use these really, really pretty. These are coral trees, which really gorgeous when they bloom. Um, and then they also used, these are, this is a type of fern. That's, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> Let me see if that'll pull it up. There we go. This is called a bird's nest fern. And they also used stag horn ferns that looked like this, which all these things are very exotic looking, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, let me find. Oh, there's so many plants. <laughs> <laughs> there was. So I don't, gosh, I don't think I can find it quickly. So it's something I'm going to look for. I might post it later if I find it in the Discord because there is a, a head that's kind of has things. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. This might be it. Look at this. Oh, there you go. Mm hmm. Because that's very, the top is what's giving it away to be more indie because of that, mm -hmm. that square. So if that is the same tree, which it could be, it looks old enough that it could be, but then maybe they've trained it to grow over this because that was added for sure in the 90s hmm. when Indiana Jones was, because it, it looks exactly like Mara inside the ride. So Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, okay. So they found the trees from um, knocking on doors, from ads, from the freeways, um, from all kinds of places. And then, of course, they had the Dominguez palm. And, you know, it's interesting because I think there was actually two trees that were on the Dominguez property. But the Dominguez palm, the specific canary palm, was one that was like the one that they had to keep. But I, I feel like there was two because all the pictures I've ever seen, there was two palms. that look very similar in age. This is from 1955. The Nile Princess. Uh, so let me show, I got some more plants. Where am I at? Uh, these guys, which are called heliconias. They're really pretty. Look like little tiny birds or something. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> then we did these ones already. These are the bromeliads, yeah. which are really pretty. You see these a lot in the Polynesian resort too. They use a lot of bromeliads. Yeah, there's kind of a standard tropical plant. Mm-hmm. And then where did I just put that Google search, which had a couple of good pictures? There you go. Here's some. Um, and then the current horticulture. I had, <laughs> I had a good article that had a bunch of pictures of like the current. This might be it. Does this have the gallery? No, it doesn't. There's. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the one I was looking for. Where I, this is like a current. Uh, Disneyland horticor uh, horticulture list. Ugh, terrible. Hang on. Ugh, what do I gotta? What do I gotta pay? Is this got a paywall? What's <laughs> no. happening here? No. But I, I just um, like seeing him at night, like picking up palms that are dead, and like cutting things off. There's a picture in here too. Please provide an email. No, all right, here. No. I got it. I got an email for you. <laughs> Kate at distries. <laughs> <Disney Cicero. laughs> no. Hang on. No, I don't need any more. <laughs> I do have I this it. book. I was trying to see if there's there anything go. in this one. They do have this really great book that I haven't um, looked at in a while, but this is a fun one to recommend. It's probably pretty old. It might not even be still published, but this Disney's Glorious Gardens is a great one if you're interested in um, plants and the way that they style all of their landscaping. It has a lot of really interesting details about that. It has, if you're, if you're a gardener, they talk about climate control. They talk about how all the little details about how they take care of all of their plants in Disney, in the Disney parks. So I highly recommend that one. If you're really into gardening, um, they can give you, they talk about sculpture gardening and how to care for your roses and things like that. So you can actually have some good Disney tips for your gardens. 
I, I actually have a good uh, way to keep roses red. I paint them. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> um, they do show the, the crews taking care of the plants on Main Street here, too. So. <sighs> you have no luck of I am I am battling. But look, look, it's a good picture because the guy's, like, up physically in the trees because yeah. it's in the jungle. They straight up have to trim bamboo and... It's just cool seeing him working yeah. on, on the plants. Like, this guy's got a big pole saw. And he's just, like, chopping off stuff. <laughs> and they said for years they um, – you kind of mentioned it before, but for years they would go in every single morning and they would have to look for oranges and orange blossoms. And they'd have to pull them off the tree or pick up the oranges from the ground because you can't have oranges. They didn't work in all of the story that they were trying to tell. So they would get rid of all the oranges. I kind of wonder if they sold them or used them in their restaurants because <laughs> – why not? You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's kind of, so free oranges. I know the I love this picture because it's a mixture of man, tropical, uh, the bromeliad and then a fake butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the bromeliads are and orchids, too, are a lot more prevalent in the Florida version than the Disney Disneyland one, which would make sense for their climates because it's not nearly as humid in it's very arid in um, Southern California. So they'd have to do a lot. There's a lot less mist. That's something I always notice when I go to the Florida version. There's a lot more like misting and fog in the beginning part. There's none of that in Disneyland. It's not, it's very different. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where the orchids are. So this is uh, Abel Cesaris. And he's, I guess, the current uh, horticul horticulturalist for Disneyland. And this is a ficus tree, which we saw pictures of before. But yeah. I just love, <laughs> it's just, it's so cool seeing, who's this, Karen Hedges? She's the director of horticulture and landscaping and oversees the cruise. Her name is Karen Hedges? Karen, Karen Hedges, dude. Because she's always <laughs> taking care of Hedges. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, also oh, fun fact, uh, elephants have the greatest memory of any animal in the jungle. Uh, I wish I had a memory like that, Kate. Yeah, I wish you did too. Uh... There's another quote in here by Karen Hedges uh, because they switched up. This is not her quote yet, but Disney workers have switched up the plant makeup from mo mostly the leftover orange trees and switched them over to things that are more jungle like. And now it has a large tree canopy made up of coral trees, ficus trees and large palm and bamboo overhead. And the plants actually keep the heat in the daytime and then it carries it through the nighttime. So uh, it'll stay a couple of degrees warmer even when the Anaheim temperatures are starting to freeze because that canopy kind of keeps it in. And the humidity also uh, gets attracted by some of the aerial roots from things like ficus trees because she's taken care of hedges. Thank you, Karen Hedges. Well done, Karen. Um, it's interesting to me. So... These plants, obviously, like we talked about the canopy, when you look up from the boat, you would be able to see that this was not a very tall, well-established jungle yet. But if you only saw this part, you know, you would see that it actually looks pretty good. Um, but they had a lot of rain that year. Um, they had a lot of challenges opening Disneyland, a lot of challenges just in general. But um, they did have a lot of challenges that were added by the weather because it rained a whole lot, which actually I think, you know, plants like water, but not a ton of water. And I think that contributed to some of them looking a little bit like sickly in that first year. You can see some of these palms. Obviously, the Domingo's palm is nice and strong, but all the other ones are looking a little bit sad and lanky. Um, they had even one of the elephants sunk into the mud like halfway the day before opening day and they had to like lift him out with a crane and like stabilize him because his back legs like sunk into the mud so they had their share of challenges and like kirk said um they did add they stabilized the soil with a mixture of clay they did especially for the rivers of america because when they would put water in it it would drain out so that it um the water would just kind of disappear because it would go into the sand and just drain um, so much so that I, Joe Fowler had nightmares about waking up on opening day to there be no water in the rivers of America, which just is funny. Like the things that worry us and keep us up at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His was the water draining out. They did, though, establish first it was clay and then eventually they put a concrete 
bottom to it so that it wouldn't drain anymore. Um, but it did leak. Remember how it leaked into the elevator shafts of the haunted mansion? So it's, I mean, that's the reason why we never got to use those elevators in their, their made to use. Now just hide sunny eclipse. I Goodbye, know. sunny. Could have been in Florida, but they Could were scared been. it would happen again. So, mm -hmm. yep. Which is back in our Haunted Mansion series, which was, you know, good old 16 episodes of it. <laughs> it was awesome. It People was love it. it was People great. love it. If you get through it, you'll love it. Well, that's about all I have for plants. So obviously, we have a tremendous amount more about the Jungle Cruise, but I think that's about as much as I've got for plants right I now. I have one other plant. It's another uh, hibiscus plant. Uh, this plant is very unreliable. It's a flaky hibiscus. <laughs> I need more work on that one. That one is, yeah. They're not all winners, okay, Kate? All right? You got to try. <laughs> every time I feel like you're, um, if every time you say the word biscuit, I think of hobnobs. And now I just want to eat one. They're so good. <laughs> I love the hobnobs. I'm down. I'm down. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this, is, it, this is panic mode. Do they sell them in the States? I, I think they do maybe at World World Market. I think it's where you can find them. Yeah, hobnobs. hobnobs. And they so these things, if you, if you don't know what they are, they're I'm not gonna eat one because it'll be like ASMR horrible. Uh, but they're they they don't taste like cookie cookie. It reminds me more of like a Belveda. They're very oatmeal oatmeal and yeah. I mean they're made out of some sort of meal on top of it. It's funny like if you look at the ingredients, it says milk chocolate oaty knobbly biscuits. Knobbly biscuits. And they're made with 30% rolled oats, but there's something else. It's wholemeal wheat flour. They're really good. Publix has them? I didn't look in Publix. Yeah, for I'll sure they're in World Market. I've seen them there. But oh, if, for those of you who don't know, those were gifted oh, okay. from our, our good friend oh. Dean, who's yes. from England. So that's why we're talking about hop knobs. Um, I used but... HP sauce tonight. It's delicious. <laughs> Knobbly, yes. Oh, Elliot <laughs> says they're extra knobbly. He remembers them because we used to have them in Ireland. So I like them because they're not that sweet. I don't really like overly sweet. And honestly, I feel like because it's got oatmeal and stuff, it's like it's health food. <laughs> they have they have versions of them that don't have chocolate okay. on them too. So if you wanted ones that are just oatmeal. oh, you know what? The the one thing I don't like about them is you do get that the chocolate is really thin and it yeah. melts like instantly. It's like all over your fingers. Yeah, it really does. Mm -hmm. It's a whole process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the downside. But. It's totally healthy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's made yeah. of oats. Well, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, it's saying each biscuit contains uh, 388 kilojoules. So that means nothing to me. So it's perfect. <laughs> Calorie no, free. It, I, yeah, no, it says 90, 93 uh, kilocalories. So 93 calories per. That's like little but, calories, right? <laughs> yeah, little baby calories, you know? <laughs> And honestly, the adults, just for your adults reference intake, energy per 100 grams, because that's how I measure my food, uh, is only 494 calories. How many cookies is that? Like, just tell me how many, <laughs> how many biscuits. Also, it's part of the one, two, three healthy balance. They're saying these are, these are healthy. That's what I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> They're health food. Sure. It has oats in it. That qualifies. Come on. That's like oatmeal cookies are the healthy cookies. They've That's got raisins saying. and oats. You, know? and... Yeah. you don't do raisins though, right? Are you an anti-raisin person? I can do them in a, like an oatmeal raisin cookie I could do. I can't, okay. I cannot abide by stuffing. If you put raisins in your yeah. stuffing, we got to chat. I put cranberries in mine. Is that acceptable? Kate, okay, <laughs> when we get off this, I need to talk to you. <laughs> Oh, no. No, cran cranberry, <laughs> but you probably put, like, sage and thyme in yeah, it. Like, really, yeah, like herbs and things. Just leave the mulling spices to your wine, lady, okay? <laughs> Don't put them in the stuff and what? you're ruining it. What? I'm just kidding. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes I, need I put it, sausage you, in it, too. It's really good. That's See? Now you've totally redeemed yourself. You've okay, now good. You've gone full circle. <laughs> I was out. Now I'm back in. Okay, good. Well, I feel better. I'll be able yeah. to sleep tonight. <laughs> See, this is, my this is like wake up and sweat cranberries do i use craisins <laughs> next year do i not <laughs> i like i don't use real cranberries i've always used dried ones but which I use would you guys for sauce 
Which you guys didn't also realize is we are sponsored now by Ocean Spray and Craisins. <laughs> So secret, secret. That's how it took us a long time to get there until the end of the program, but we got the plug. <laughs> what would Just we be kidding. sponsored with for the Jungle Cruise? Like, I don't know, Ziploc. like fertilizer and <laughs> Ziploc. Ziploc would be great. I would love Ziploc to. Ziploc would be great. Yeah, hey, I would Ziploc. take Ziploc all day. Secret sponsor, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need some sort of water purification, something or other, backside oh, yeah. of water. Sure, Britta. sure. Because they, they got the, that turbidity of the water that we talked mm -hmm. about. <laughs> Ginger snap cookies. Ginger snap cookies. Oh, see? Yeah. Maybe maybe an airline because it's plain to see. That would be a good advertisement. The plane's only in the Disneyland or Disney World one. It's not in Disneyland. Don't, don't. Stop just. You can't say it like that. Don't say <laughs> it like that. All right? It's not fair. Like what? No, because you said, <laughs> I, I hate... <laughs> When you talk about Disney World, it always is like disparagingly. And I know you don't mean it, but like <laughs> that don't. was like, a, it's like, it it's, was... that's only in the Disney World. And I'm like, but okay, it still is good. <laughs> no, I actually really like the plane. I'm actually very yeah. sad that that's not in Disneyland because yeah. it's the Casablanca plane, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. later. But yeah. no, I like the plane. I'm sorry. I'll try mm -hmm. to speak differently <laughs> in the future. <laughs> I love Disney World. It's just, it's not Disneyland, but I love Disney World. <laughs> I still think the best way to explain the dichotomy between Disney World and Disneyland. Disneyland doesn't have time to mess around, and they have locals, so they need to change it up, and it needs to be good. They yeah. don't have a lot of space. Disney World has the luxury, so it means that we are a lot more options, but that means that a lot more options are not good. Well, but it's, not, it's not always even a lot more options. Sometimes it's just more spread out. It's just like more space. Like there's a lot mm. more space in Disney World. I guess you could say because of there's extra gates, there's more options. But by the sheer number of rides that are available in that tiny little space that is Disneyland and California Adventure, I don't feel like I'm getting the short end of the stick by like first. No, Disney I don't. World I don't think. Disneyland. I don't think a track. Well, I think a DCA you're getting shorted a little bit in Not Disneyland. Now. I don't They've think so. They've added so much to it that it feels. I don't it's, know. it's a. It's a really. You got you got to go there, my friend. With maybe Avengers maybe Campus, now everything. Adventures Campus has helped, but they mm -hmm. still need another attraction there. I don't know if um, San Fran Tokyo is going to get an attraction. Maybe it will, um, but I, I feel like that San whole Fran's Midway Tokyo. San Fran Tokyo, Tokyo, whatever. I don't. What do I know? <laughs> like, wait a minute. Don't listen to me. That's not right. <laughs> Nobody said I'm like a movie expert, you know, or an expert in anything. I didn't research well, this, okay? Well, we just got Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway added to Toontown, so that's something. Uh, well, um, you can't. Well, they just pushed it back to March. The uh, all the other stuff, so you can't go on. Wait, is is Who Framed Roger Rabbit pushed back till March too? I don't know. I Probably. feel like they've opened. They must have. They've opened part of it because they've they opened, opened Mickey, Mickey and Minnie's because you have to go through it. But I haven't been there yet. The rest I'm they haven't referred, going so. in a couple weeks, so yeah. um, you know, I'll take a look when I go. But now it sounds like they pushed it back, which is the weather. It rained so much, Southern California, like it did for Disneyland. Like it delayed things building Disneyland. It delayed Tokyo or to uh, Toontown. Yeah, I have, a, I have a question about Disneyland. Could you, you know, how like I could spend an entire day in like a land. Could you do that for something like I think it would be really fun to do? I don't know if you would do it, but like because you're not there that often, it would be different if you were local. But like, I would love to do just Cars Land all day. I just love that area so much. I feel like there's enough food options. I feel like there's enough to explore. I know there's not a trillion, you know, rides and attractions, but it's just so pretty. I'd say a half of day. You could probably spend a half day there if you really loved it and wanted to just hang out and enjoy like the vibes. But there's only three attractions. There's a lot of food, so you could sit. There's and enjoy. tons of food. There's Cozy a ton cone, of food. There clothes. is character meet and greets with the cars, so you could do that. Um, and there's, but there, and there's some merch that you can shop and stuff. But I would say I probably couldn't spend an entire day there. I have spent a significant portion. I love going at one point of the day doing all the rides coming back in the evening and enjoying the food and the atmosphere as they turn on yeah. all the neon lights i think because they, they have that two times a day they have that ceremony when mm -hmm. all the lights turn on which is really cool yeah, sunset yeah and so i would say i like to see it in the daytime and then i like to go back and see it in the evening because it's like two different places they're completely different night and day um i do love sitting behind flows and just watching the cars go by in radiator springs and eat there i think that's one of my favorite places to sit that's where Mel and I sat, and um, we had uh, we ate there twice. 
uh, because I desperately wanted to, I've never had this before. I never had apple uh, pie with a cheddar cheese slice and that was Oh, a yeah. thing. So I thought, Yeah. I was like, oh, this is, it's not very good, The but good old I, days. yeah, they don't <laughs> have that anymore. I don't think so. They changed Oh, the menu at Flo so much. They don't even have the ribs okay. anymore, which they used to have. They have fried chicken now, Do which they is still still good, have but not the, as what same. was it, Bananas Foster French Toast? Something like that. There was a really famous French toast they had. I Like don't a know. stuffed French toast. It was They changed really, almost really the good. entire menu there. I'd have to look. I don't have like Mm. breakfasty foods very often. So Mm. I'm, I'm running in the mornings. I don't do breakfast, but, um, yeah. Uh, wait, I got it. Someone said something about something. Um, Descriptive. <laughs> I know. I don't remember. Um, oh, Rick said you should spend, uh, afternoon into evening into cars land. I agree. Yeah, Like watching yeah, this, the sun, it's the so light pretty change. at night. It's just gorgeous. Um, but I don't know. In Disneyland, I could probably spend the majority of the day in, like, Fantasyland has a ridiculous amount of rides, including the Matterhorn, including Small World, um, Mr. Toad, Peter Pan, Snow White, Pinocchio, It's it's literally my Casey heaven. Jr., Storybook Land Canal Boats. You could spend a good portion of the day there um, doing all of that. Dark rides, I, I said this earlier when we were at Busch Gardens, I love a good roller coaster, but I'm no longer a kid where uh, roller coasters, I enjoy them, but like I, I'm not looking for like the biggest, fastest, steepest, which is always like a roller coaster junkies kind of thing is like the next level of roller coaster. Still really enjoy them. They don't impact me in one way or another. I just really love storytelling and dark rides are my thing. So your fantasy land is like my heaven. I just It's love so great. everything about It's your lovely. fantasy land. It's And there's so many beautiful. attractions. Oh, and the carousel. I don't even say the carousel. And Dumbo. I <laughs> just like, Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't even remember them all. And then you've You didn't got say churros Alice. are in there. Alice is in there. Yep. And the tea, uh, teacups and mad, mad tea party. And I mean, it just yeah. never ends. Your fa And like the, our fantasy land seems so boring now. it is. Sorry. <laughs> it really is. I mean, like It is. ever since they put Princess uh, Hall in, I've been not as much of a fan. No, that seems like wasted space to me. I feel like they could have a It's really great ride there, even if they didn't have Mr. Toad or Snow White or whatever. You know, I know Mr. Toad was in Winnie the Pooh, but even if they didn't have like, they need something there. I agree. I 100% am. I agree with you on that. We agree. yeah, that there needs to be an attraction there, and let's also make that Sleepy Hollow dark ride and tear down the Hall of Presidents. There's space. Make it. Let's go. Only if they put some of the things from Hall of Presidents somewhere else, just so we have memories. Because there's, Walt really wanted that ride. That was like a big thing for Walt. I think we could have pieces of it somewhere without having the whole attraction. Throw it in one man's dream. There you go. There's your dream, bud. <laughs> There they are. You can go see it. oh, man. It would But... work there. That's like our only museum piece is in studio. So, Well, do you like um, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln? No. No? The only reason why I like it is because of I like that one. the birth of uh, audio animatronics. But no. I like that one. I think it's good. I I I agree the Hall of Presidents is pretty lame. But I think that the great moments with Mr. Lincoln. The Hall of Presidents could fit in the trash. <laughs> I agree There's a with lot you. of presidents in there. There are. There's too many. Well, the thing I have against the Hall of Presidents is it because it always becomes the huge giant controversial thing every four years. It becomes Yeah, this it's giant it's just thing where we have it's to not fight with enjoyable. each other. No, First, I first of all, don't the need that. the documentary isn't even uplifting. It's it's not exciting. It doesn't make me feel good about being American. It just. It's just like talking about sometimes. It's not even Yeah. like showing the challenges. And then the reflections of the presidents as audio animatronics. Dude, like put beards on them, throw them in pirates. Like, let's go. Like, we're fine. Add We don't need them. a, add a couple, a couple pirates, a couple new pirates. Yeah, seriously. Some of them were kind of like pirates anyway, so I guess that that, that tracks. I can I can I tell you like a really brief story that's um that's an imagineering story. So like my friends who um work in engineering and imagineering over at Disneyland told me a funny story about pirates. The uh do you know the you know how pirates has the lamppost pirate and like the one guy's holding up the other one and they're like real staggery, right? Well Yeah. the the really staggery one, his hip, his pelvis joint broke. So the <laughs> no. ride was down and he was like all wiggling down, right? But to get him up and running, they literally found a broom handle and snapped it in half, shoved it in the joint just to get him through the day and zip tied it and then let him go. And then 
coming back, they fixed it later that night. But I think that's I like, love that. I Ingenuity. love that there's, yeah, just that's little, great. little moments to make it happen. It was a great I mean, story. That's pretty much what they did with originally with the pirates anyway, right? Like just kind of like right. <laughs> made it Dude, happen. I was saying to them the other day, I go, I was on pirates and one of the pirates, his, his pant leg was all the way up to his like mid thigh. And you saw the clear plexiglass with all of the electronics and mechanics in it. Oh yeah, the beach Which I thought was crazy too. I was like, oh my gosh, this is wild to see like the costuming and everything, so. He's, he's showing a little leg. <laughs> he was showing scene. he was showing a little no leg, put it that way. <laughs> a little no leg. Yeah. Oh, I have, to, I have to tell, pirates. speaking of scandalous pirates, another time, not on the podcast i got i have a lot more stories to tell you and one of them involves uh the uh the redhead okay yeah yeah she's well it's interesting i always think of when i think of the pirates i think of how their hydraulic fluid is bright it looks like it's pink but it's like kind of bright red (laughs) when it gets dirty so when something happens and their hydraulic fluid leaks it looks like there was a (laughs) They are in a real pirate battle, which is like my favorite. I love that. Yeah, it was. And this was another thing about like hydraulics versus pneumatics, because even in the Jungle Cruise, it's mainly uh, pneumatics and not hydraulics because most things are by water or overhanging. So they don't want fluid in the actual water uh, or on guests. That happens, too. Um, But the I, I thought it was interesting that the pneumatic fluid is basically like canola oil is what my friend told me it was. And I was like, that's really interesting. I never thought of like what the oil would be. He's like, yeah, it's not going to hurt you or anything, but it's like literally vegetable oil. Yeah. That is interesting. I never really thought about it. Dude, you would love my friends. Like I, we (laughs) sat in nomad lounge for like two and a half hours and just chatted and it was amazing. I would love to meet your friends. They sound yeah, great. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, because they like actually know things. Like, we talked about dinosaur for an hour and 20 minutes. Ginge, I know you're in here, and it would blow your mind that there is major differences between indie and dinosaur. And I saw pictures. It was like insane. It's the coolest. Like, in the way that they changed the, the vehicle or the ride layout or the vehicles, ride layout. Yeah, it's so cool. Well, I mean, I can tell from like riding on it, it's a very different experience from between mm-hmm. the two. They're not they're not identical, but they are similar, but not identical for sure. Very similar, not identical. Also, I thought this was this is just sorry, we're on a major tangent. We really need to end the episode, uh, <laughs> but uh, this is just cool stuff. Uh, our dinosaur in Disney World, your indie, your indie, you walk into the bottom floor because it's two floors, right? In mm-hmm. ours, we. What looks like you're going into the second floor, that's a berm. So it actually isn't underground. Like, so there isn't a subterranean level, even though we're walking down. That's just a berm that's built up facade wise. And the show building, that's the ground floor. When, hmm. So when you're on the loading platform, you're actually on the ground floor. You're not underground or anything. I thought we were. You're not. It's so cool. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, Indy, yeah. you have to go up and over the tracks and then back down. Right. Exactly. It's a thing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like mm-hmm. practically in downtown Disney because the building is so far away from the actual adventure land because yeah. that's the only place they had space to put it. So that's why you walk for miles and miles to get <laughs> to the actual attraction. Yeah. Every time I'm coming out of that attraction, I was like, this has to be like a quarter mile walk. It is so far. <laughs> it's such a great queue, though. It yeah. is. Oh, and I'm sad that some of the effects don't really work on it anymore because they had such great ones with the ceiling like that would come down with the, the stuff, spikes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work anymore, which is such a bummer. I think it's because people panicked with it, is my guess. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know for sure. But, I mean, that would be really scary, like, especially for kids. My kids have been, like, nervous going through there when they were little. So, Dude, I'm telling you, the queue for Tron, there's one hallway. It is tight. It is a oh, very no. thin, thin, thin hallway, and it's all black with some blue lighting on the sides. Oh, you could maybe fit two people in there, like side by side. And I'm like, this is such a strange choice. I'm not really sure what the design choice is. Right, that's what I'm saying. It and it feels very much cramped, and it's maybe only a hundred feet. But the whole time you're like, oh, this is like. <laughs> I don't tell well, me that. I'm gonna have to like close my eyes or something during that part <laughs> no you'll take it all in, in so like claustrophobic it, so, yeah. oh gosh well i know 
Well, this was a really great episode for Jungle Cruise. I feel like next week we're, um, I don't know if we're going to go construction or animals. We'll have to chat about where we're going next week. But um, we definitely have all kinds of more things to go over I, for the Jungle Cruise. I think before we get into, because animals seems more scenic, like scene by scene to do the animals. Because if you did all the animals and then scene by scene, I feel like it, it's more cohesive as a story because the animals are in the story of the scene. We could talk about audio animatronics um, and construction. I think construction, like the rails, the tracks, the boat systems, the yeah. canal, yeah. Um, maybe some of the mechanics, like even the waterfall, that kind of stuff, and, and maybe oh, yeah. just we generalized. We should talk about Schweitzer Falls, yes. Right, generalized Falls. mechanics. I need to go into, got to remind me on Monday or Thursday next week, I have to go into Skipper Canteen and take some photos because there's some... Uh, there's some really good photos that involve like Albert Schweitzer and Schweitzer Falls and tell that story a little bit more. So, and yeah. I know I don't have them on my thing. So. Yeah, let's do that. Yep. So mm -hmm. join us next week for talking about the construction of the Jungle Cruise is where we're going to head next. Um, all the, the little mechanical pieces and the way that they actually chose to dig out the riverbed, which is actually quite a funny story. So that's what we'll talk about next week on Distory. We really appreciate all of you guys hanging out with us and chatting and um, hearing all about the 800 plus plants that are in the Jungle Cruise. It's been a really fun episode. We got to point out all of our favorite ones like that one and that one right there and that one. This one's named Bob. Uh, this plant is named Fred. This plant. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, thank you, Kirk, for uh, hanging out with me and, and for chatting about all the plants and things. It's yeah, really thanks. fun to hunt down trees with you and talk about Dominguez palms and learn all about... I mean, gosh, we even... The canopy on the Jungle Cruise, that that blew my mind. I'm going to do more research for our, our episode next week about that canopy and figure out exactly why did we never get the bamboo canopy. That's our history know. mystery. I'll have to um, I'll have to ask some questions to some people who may know. Yeah, yeah. We'll do some digging, see what we can find. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and Kirk, and we'll see you next time for history. Sounds good. Thanks so much okay. for chilling. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. See you guys. See ya. Bye.